For the first time, there was an election for the EU's top job. Social Democrat Martin Schulz and conservative Jean-Claude Juncker faced off in TV debates during the campaign. The winner's task would be to sell the idea of Europe to a largely disillusioned populace. Schulz lost the vote, but stayed on as president of the European Parliament, while Juncker became European Commission president. He and his team were faced with winning over hearts and minds and pulling Europe's economy out of the doldrums. We've decided that we'll be concentrating on the most important issues in the first months of the new commission. Because we don't think every problem in Europe is also a problem for the European Union and the European Commission. There's a wind of change blowing, but it won't be a storm. But there was a storm soon afterwards. A storm of controversy, as newspapers detailed Luxembourg's status as a tax haven for companies. The investigation became known as LuxLeaks. The country's questionable policies and loopholes were the responsibility of the then Prime Minister, Jean-Claude Juncker. There were other problems, too. Protests like this one in Belgium showed people's opposition to austerity policies. The economy remained stalled. Unemployment, caused in part by austerity measures, remained high. And many voters turned away from the idea of Europe. Eurosceptic parties found new support in 2014. In France, the far-right National Front, headed by Marine Le Pen, actually won European elections. Alongside the internal problems, there was also crisis at Europe's door. The conflict in Ukraine and Russia's annexation of Crimea. EU leaders ordered sanctions against Russia, citing European values. Germany's chancellor saw the move as a sign of increased unity in the bloc. Despite all the debate about this, I think we've dealt with it well. Think how Europe was in the face of the Iraq war. It was split in two. Now it's been possible to stay united, both within Europe and with our transatlantic partners. That's also thanks to a US president who looks towards Europe and is interested in what happens here. That's a huge value in itself. The cooling relations with Russia gave new relevance to NATO and its new secretary general, Jens Stoltenberg. At a meeting in Wales, NATO members voted to form a rapid reaction force to be able to better respond to any escalation of the Ukraine crisis. This came amid reports of NATO identifying Russian military aircraft close to the airspace of member states. Proof of the organization's worth, said Stoltenberg. And of course, I never welcome a more dangerous world. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, but, but, but the increased focus on NATO reflects that uh, we once again uh, see how important NATO is, that we need a strong alliance, uh, being able to protect and defend all allies. There were new concerns about the Middle East, as conflict and lawlessness in Iraq and Syria enabled the IS militia to capture territory and install a reign of terror. Tens of thousands of refugees from the Middle East and from Africa fled to Europe. EU states were ill-prepared for such an influx. In Germany, refugee centers are overflowing. But many don't even make it. The UN says nearly three and a half thousand migrants died crossing the Mediterranean this year. Italy's Mare Nostrum program rescued more than 150,000 migrants from the Mediterranean. But that program won't continue into 2015. Instead, there's a new European program, Triton. But it covers a smaller section of the sea. There could be more maritime tragedies involving migrants in 2015. The EU will face tough challenges in the year ahead. Member states will have to unite to solve Europe's problems, even though many Europeans are more apathetic than ever about the idea of European unity.